वन वेलकम बैक गाइज वेलकम बैक आई होप एवरी वन सेफ एंड डूइंग फाइन वी आर बैक विद यू नो अप्लाइड पेट्रोलियम इंजीनियरिंग लेसन we started our sessions on reservoir engineering uh, we covered two sessions basically we started with rock properties where in the first session i discussed about porosity then i discussed about isothermal compressibility i was alone discussing back then but today i am supported by mr jayesh chahar uh, my uh, usual accompanied guest every day we have been discussing about machine learning topics etc in a separate playlist so you can check that out as well so we are back with uh, our discussions so today in the agenda we will have two things uh, before that uh, hello jesh how are you doing hello 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 everyone i'm doing good great so jesh we will be starting uh, or maybe rather continuing this session today uh, we will talk about the third uh, rock property which is uh, not basically a rock property uh, it is called fluid saturation Uh, i always get confused whether we should call it a rock property or a fluid property uh, because it is the fluid which is saturating but it is the rock which is giving it space so how would you call it jesh so that we finalize what is sa- fluid saturation it's not so, important of course i mean yeah, yeah but yeah fluid is residing inside the rock so it is a kind of rock property only because of- yeah there can be a debate but yeah i think calling it a rock property may may makes more sense depending on the type of a rock uh, saturation can be changed yep exactly or maybe so I, can, we can also say that it is kind of a mixture of both the properties as uh, the force between the rock and fluid that can also affect the things right 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 so basically it's a debate right we yeah. we, we don't have to finalize but let's let's think of fluid saturation as the space that the rock provides uh to the fluid that comes in and stays so think of it like you have a flat of your own and your friend comes and stays you are kind enough to provide them some space so your friend is the fluid but does that make the the flat space your friend's property of course not <laughs> it's it's your property because you are providing them some space so that's how i like to think about fluid saturation so to define what a fluid saturation everyone knows by now what porosity is right so let's first uh, talk about the skeleton of what a rock when we talk about rocks in the subsurface jesh uh, uh, stop me or add anything whenever you yep. like to add something yeah, yeah, yeah. i'll keep on going uh, i i am happy to have you here as a guide or some sort so i'll talk about first how a rock looks like uh, so that students they imagine what i'm talking about in a better way so let's talk about a skeleton of a rock okay skeleton of a rock all right so basically if i draw a rock i would draw it like this 1 2 3 4 and i will just explain what all of these things are but let me just uh, draw the picture first meanwhile you can make some guesses inside your head what these things are but <coughs> let's finally talk about them so basically these circles that you see these circles are what we call as rock grains okay these are grains and the grains can be of different types the grains can be of different types and that's what defines the lithology the grains can be sandstone or maybe made up of quartz etc they can be limestone dolomites etc carbonates basically and they can be yeah like i said dolomite or something so basically these are the primary constituents that make up a rock major portion of the rock right these are the rocky part of the rock but the rocky part has something else as well in the picture like you can clearly see something which is holding the rock together uh this is something that we call as we call binding them as material. the binding material exactly so this is the binding material right and uh, this can be for example it can be silica or calcite clay yeah calcite etc bang on yeah calcite right so and 
now we are talking about the interesting part which is the agenda for today we are talking about something which is inside here which is called which is called what the fluid plates and i should not always draw this fluid in the same color which is green because green i'm talking about hydrocarbons but i should also draw the bluish part so jesh i hope you know what i'm talking about here yeah, that I the fluid that. is not the only fluid uh, oil is not the only oil in growth so we, yeah we can have water yeah but well. generally in Let, industry it is represented by these colors oil hydrocarbon yeah. is represented by green and water is represented by blue and gas exactly. is generally represented by red reddish color yeah yeah so let me have the reddish color and let's draw a few bubbles of gas as well so all of this combined is what we call as fluid okay all of this combined is what we call as fluid so to to summarize uh, also this binding material is also called cement at times because it's doing a job of what a cement is so basically for fluid to stay inside the rock the first requirement for fluid to stay inside the rock the first requirement is for fluid to stay or saturate so staying inside the rock means the fluid is saturating the rock in the rock the first thing that you need is called porosity that we talked about in the last session right so now we are back now we understand what a rock looks like now we define we are ready to define what a saturation means saturation is nothing but the volume of the fluid in the rock divided by the volume the total pore volume so this entire square that you see which is a, a very simple representation this is the pore volume right the entire volume from the outside if you draw or calculate that's the bulk volume but the internal volume that you see inside the brown square is called the pore volume and the because here you can see the fluid is occupying almost 100 percentage of uh, you know what you call the pore that volume is. the saturation can be what uh, jesh make a guess saturation can be what one in this uh, case whole yeah whole fluid saturation yeah. yeah the whole so basically fluid saturation it is like um, uh, first of all we are making a home so that our home is uh, our pores or you can say porosity and after making the home we are dividing different different rooms for different different members now these members will be your different types of fluids and their room capacity will be your saturation exactly exactly bang on so exactly so your i'll draw another picture to clarify this let me add one more page so i'll i'll differentiate what is the difference between 100% saturation and uh, what jayesh was just mentioning as rooms or compartments so let me draw the rock again now i'll simplify the portion now so let me draw the internal square and the external is the rocky part which is the grains plus the cement okay and the internal part is is the fluid and i will draw it with the green color now so this is my fluid okay now because the fluid is occupying occupying 100% of my pore volume then the saturation is what 100% or 1 right but on the parallel case if i draw the same picture of a different rock which looks something like this let me draw the rock which looks something like this here the the grainy part extends some somewhat in here okay and i draw the same thing again and be aware this might be a this might be a tricky question now i ask you what is the saturation in this case jaish would you like to make a guess Yeah, here, here again it will be one. Exactly. So here, as the pore volume is changed, the like always remember. Some people tend to uh, think of it like as the uh, pore volume keeps on decreasing, the saturation would also decrease or something like that. It it gives us an intuition like that, right? Because the rock has some lesser space, the saturation might be lesser, but never. It's never the case. even the smallest of the pore if it is full filled by a 100% liquid or 100% fluid even then the saturation can be 100% okay yeah so As that's what saturation will be relative to the pore space available space exactly that is worth writing here 
saturation is always relative or with respect to the pore space great statement that so i hope uh, everyone has this clear understanding because th these kind of uh, you know uh, tricky questions can be placed in uh, these are very simple but they they tend to confuse students sometimes when they are studying a lot and they forget the simple things so jesh do you have any example in your mind where we can give an example of uh, less than 100% saturation so less than 100% this is of course yeah obviously if yeah. Uh, two here we are only talking about when one fluid is present we are assuming that only oil is present as by the color yep so but in yep. gen generally uh, in scenarios what happens generally um, both oil and uh, water is present so in that scenario in if in a rope both water and oil are present then saturation will be different from one oil saturation as well as water saturation yep yep brilliant so so yeah i mean uh that can we can make a case. third rock uh, with the combination of both then it will be great yeah 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 so i mean what i would like to say is there cannot be any case and jaysh i would like your support on this is there cannot be any case where saturation overall saturation overall saturation summation of all less than one overall yeah. saturation is almost everywhere it is one because even if there is no hydrocarbon or gas or water in there uh there will always be air right there will always be air uh unless there are cases where it's all vacuum uh, which i don't know about i don't think there is anything which is vacuum uh jesh uh, do you have any example where you have seen that a rock has pores containing vacuum no no generally if yeah. only hydrocarbon or water is also present in pore spaces uh their yeah. compression will be uh, or you can say expansion will be enough to fill the empty pore spaces yeah exactly so that's that's what uh, i wanted to make sure that students understand yeah now let's talk about fluid wise saturation always remember summation of saturation of each fluid is equals to 1 okay that's the the given condition now fluids can be what fluid can be gas fluid can be water fluid can be oil summation will always be 1 so that's a, a thumb rule you always remember this saturation of so in any given rock sample saturation of oil plus saturation of gas plus saturation of water will always be equivalent to one let me draw a picture again for this so i'll draw the rock again and i will draw three compartments okay i'll draw three compartments 1 2 3 so basically the first compartment i'll draw it as green okay and the second compartment i draw it as red and the third compartment i draw it as of course in the rock there are there are not ideal cases where compartments are divided like this but this is just to clarify things uh in this case like you would see in this case the saturation of oil is greater than water in gas saturation of oil is greater than saturation of water or saturation of gas but saturation of oil is less than one agree so saturation of oil is less than 1 but overall saturation in this case also it is equal to 1 so that's the point i wanted to convey okay so if in case you find some vacuum blocks here then you can say that saturation yeah. is not equal and again yeah, yeah this is a good point that uh, saturation individual saturation will always always be less than 1 it is not physically possible if you see yep, the formula yep. also yep exactly saturation individually almost always even if there is no gas here there will always be air and air is also considered a gas uh, or yeah. a fluid fluid to be to be yeah sure. so basically the the reason we need to understand for, uh, porosity and saturation together why we need to understand why i am emphasizing so much on porosity and saturation is because these two things are very very useful in what uh, in reserve estimation knowing the oil capacity present inside exactly or oil in place calculation driving the economics of a certain operating company 
Absolutely. So yeah, on the surface, you look at a rock. You look at Jayesh looks at one rock. I look at another rock. Uh, we can fight it out that both of them look as bulky as each other's, right? My rock is also big. Your rock is also big. So uh, my rock should be in production. Your should be not. Your should be not not in production because it looks, you know, ugly. <laughs> That's not how reservoir engineers think. Reservoir engineers need some criterion on basis of which they decide whether you should go for production or is is a field economic or not. And these are the starting points. Porosity combined with saturation, uh, the thickness of the reservoir, and these things they lead to a topic called volumetrics, which we will touch. Uh, that help us understand how much oil is is present. So even if my rock looks smaller than Jayesh's rock, my rock can have higher in higher volume. Your rock can also have higher volume of oil present. 